Let's move on to the Sunday nighter Saints Buccaneers. This is one of the few games where there is some weather possibilities. Let's not get too excited about what it says on Tuesday, especially in Tampa. But 76 Fahrenheit showers, 16 miles per hour. Nathan Serna says, repeat, Jimmy. Yes, I will repeat. Cardinals first half. Roll with my man Bleds. 8.20 p.m. Eastern, Sunday nighter, Saints, Buccaneers. Saints 5-2, and 2-1 two, two on the road. Bucks 6-2, and 3-0 oh at home. Saints coming off the 26-23 overtime win in Chicago. Breeze was 31 for 41, 280 yards, 2 TDs, 0 interceptions. Kamara had another great game. You know, Abezi, I'm not very good at props, and, and they're much more – I find much more difficult in football than they are in basketball or even hockey in that matter. And Kamara with nobody – there's there's nobody else Breeze can go to, and he keeps exceeding whatever the books put up for his receiving props. Not his rushing props, but his receiving props. And Jesus, uh, he had nine catches for 96 yards. Of course he did. He was their only option, and Breeze can't throw far. It's a uh, game. It's, it's Sean Payton's of, uh, ability to get a, a specific guy open. There's a handful of offensive coordinators in the league or head coaches that can do that. And, and Sean Payton's one of them. So, yeah, Kamara, even if he is their only weapon, you won't be this week because Emmanuel Sanders is back. So that'll open things up a little bit. Um, is that facts that he's back? I'm pretty sure I read that earlier today. I, but it was a tweet, so I can't uh, I can't put stock in it. Buccaneers open at minus 4.5. They've now moved to minus 5.5. The total has dropped from 54.5 down to 51.5. I completely understand why it dropped. I, you know, I, I almost feel like to really succeed at handicapping football, you almost have to pick whether you're going to do college football and NFL football. Because trying to get ahead of both of the line movements, I mean, this is what I do full time. And we're in our first fall without NHL and NBA. And I can't, it's too much. I'm trying to get ahead of the college football. As soon as I try to get out of college football, I'm falling behind the NFL football. Clearly that 54 and a half with the weather. Now, maybe it won't. Maybe this game soars over. But at this point, I can understand why it's moved down to 51 and a half. Michael Thomas, 2019 Offensive Player of the Year, being a mess all year long. His injury sandwiched between a one-game suspension. Will he be back in the lineup? I had Emmanuel Sanders still out with COVID, but who? it makes sense that he would be back. He's got to be. It's been like three weeks, has not it? I would say two to two and a half. But, yeah, Marquez Callaway out. Nick Easton, their center. A linebacker, Quan Alexander, questionable. And then Sheldon Rankins left late in the first half, and they call it a mild MCL sprain. So a big that's guy a, like that. That's a huge blow because – Sheldon Rankins was playing better and better as this season was coming. He was really coming into his own, and and he's a that is a big man and a and an important part of that defense. Wow, we have a a big look from Kirk Gray on the Saints money line and Mister Fun Monk, Mister Fun Monk, being rolling with us for two hours and five <laughs> minutes. Mister Fun Monk, first guy in the chat, still giving us good stuff. Says Sanders is back. Shout out to you, Mr. Fun Monk, my man. Let's talk about the Bucks on a short week. Underwhelming 25-23 win over the Giants. Brady, you know, took $400 out of my pocket. It wasn't how he did it as much as um, – no, I take that back. It was exactly how he did it. That was fucking, he looked he looked so bad. And I was like, what how am I why did I put this money on this 43-year-old? He did. He was overthrowing open targets. He he underthrew uh and I know we were texting back and forth in that game. That underthrow when he had Evans so open deep and he just didn't have the juice left in his arm to do it. But both of you, but it's old man versus old man in this. There was one seven yard pass to the sidelines where he overthrew it, and at that point I knew I was screwed. It was a, I can't remember exactly, but maybe a couple minutes left in the first quarter, and I was like, oh my, I just, I just, 
And, and the problem is, is I went in so confident. I hate that so much. It's like expectations. Anytime you have high expectations for something, you're all, you need to have just regulated expectations. Evans catches five passes for 55 yards, one TD. He's not putting up nearly the numbers he would, you know, even last year, you know, with the crab thief. He's not putting up near the numbers, but he's excited because he knows he's a red zone, red zone target, and Gronk is a red zone target. It just when I'm watching Brady in action, I'm like, man, you all you are doing is you have these red zone targets. I mean, he has so many weapons, and throughout his entire career, Tom Brady is exceptional at getting through his reads quickly. And so when you have that many weapons, and he's just literally – he scans the field so well. And he obviously knows defenses so well. So, yeah, when you when you have multiple red zone threats, then, yeah, he just, he just rifles through it so beautifully. I mean, look, Evans is going to have like 600 yards and 15 touchdowns this year. It's wild. It's so wild. And but, it's – if Winston was there, it'd be a totally different story. He'd have, he'd have a few touchdowns and then, you know, 1,500 yards. Very- yeah, there's Mr. Fun Monk also, he, he posted a little while ago that um, AB hasn't played in two years uh, and we should give him – maybe he needs a week. I agree. I don't. I don't expect him to do much. But what I do believe is, yeah, what Joe Free is saying right here, and what Mark Nicholson is also saying, he's at the very least going to be a decoy. You have to respect Antonio Brown, even if he hasn't played for a while. He's still Antonio Brown. They can't just ignore him. So that opens up so much. Even even with Godwin, when when Godwin is back and those three guys are playing with Gronk. I mean, that's just a joke to have that many weapons on on one team, especially if AB is anything like the player he was before he stopped playing. I think about this spot as Brady has to throw the ball for the team to succeed. So I agree with Ron Walsack. I think Ron Walsack's bang on. See, I, think- I don't know about that because with if Rankin's out, then you have you have an immediate problem stopping the run and we've seen ronald jones uh, exceed expectations this year and who knows when fournette's due to go off again i think fournette's done i think ronald jones steps up after i i was surprised that he got benched after that fumble what was his first fumble in three years i mean he should have stayed down i mean what that's the problem is that it's in his you know at his own 10 but I, I really think that it was a harsh decision to sit him for the whole f- for the rest of the first half after that fumble. And I do not trust Fournette. Do you trust Fournette? No, I don't. But look, I, I I said Fournette's legs were wasted at LSU because they gave him too many touches, and it's true. He he's just been worse every year because he you know they. A lot of wear on those tires, but he's still an absolute truck of a man. And if he's healthy, he can do some damage. Well, I, some, some, I, you know, I, I wish I could be a team psychologist and look in these guys' eyes. There's something doesn't feel right about Fournette. And I didn't like to call on Ronald Jones, uh, benching him for the rest of the first half. I bet you Ronald Jones is the, the, RB1 in this game. The Bucks were 4 for 12 on third down. They were outgained by the Giants. After losing Vea for the year, they only have Chris Godwin out of the lineup. So they're, they're a really fresh, healthy club. And we have Birdie here so bullish on the Buccaneers. And I get it. I get it. And, and, and I was – in fact, I was thinking that this – I would get a better line. I, I thought that, that – the public would see what happened to Tampa in that game against the Giants and think maybe they aren't that good. I would, I would, I guess the between four and a half and six, four and a half and five and a half. Who cares? I think the Bucks are the play. I agree with Birdie. What do you think? Uh, look, uh, 
I, I agree, but I also believe that the Saints are starting to put it together. And so they scare me a little bit with the spread here, but I get it. I, I understand I understand why. But do you wait? Do you wait until Emmanuel Sanders is cleared and then see a get a half a point and then take the Bucks? Yeah, that is a possibility. It's a game I might be more intrigued with on Sunday, but right now I don't. Uh, I don't feel too strongly about it. What did you think of Saints' twenty six twenty three win over the Bears? And what do you think about Drew Brees leading this team? Whether or not I mean, we need to see what Michael Thomas ha- if Michael Thomas changes things. Well, I'll, I'll put it this way: I heard um, uh, Cam Jordan on the Dan Patrick Show today, and they asked him about uh, about Michael Thomas and his answer and the way he answered it did not sound good. It did not sound. He, he dodged the question. He's like, that's a question for Michael Thomas. He, it just the way he answered it told me that there's, they do not like Michael Thomas in that dressing room right now. It just, it just, I don't know what's going on there, but it, it doesn't feel good. No, agreed. And nickname has changed. And I, I think the Buccaneers smash. But and by smash, I just mean a win over seven points. I I do not trust Drew Brees. I'm I'd be very curious to see if I get a number better number than five and a half. But what does that mean? Four and a half? What's the difference? There's no okay. difference. there's yeah there's no difference there. So uh, I don't. But I'm hesitant. Uh, we've talked. About, there's a lot of spots, especially on the one p.m. games, that I'm bullish on. This one I'm going to sit with. Sit with. And again, we have our show Sunday at 11 a.m. 